Welcome back. The viewers joined us for watching Channel Television celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the News at 10, a reminder of our major stories tonight. APC candidate Godwin Obaseki emerges winner of the Edo State Governorship election, pledges to work with everyone irrespective of party affiliation. PDP candidates in the Edo State Governorship election or Sage Ize Yamu rejects poll outcome, says result does not reflect voting pattern. Bill seeking to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women skills second reading in the Senate. And Amnesty International accuses Sudanese armed forces of using chemical weapons in Darfur. You can read up more on our top stories. They're all on our websites, channelstv.com and on youtube.com slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live in a mobile device. You can also download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app is an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Speaking of which, here are a few pictures of you sent into our portal. Let's take a look at them, shall we? We begin with this photo sent in from Ibadan, the oil state capital. It shows this man on a commercial motorcycle cover uh, covered with vehicle tires. Our eyewitness reporter wants traffic regulators to prohibit such acts. The impact of the rains can be seen here in a Rubtubu area in Benin City, the, in the Edo state capital. We see this man trying to salvage what he can from his stall uh, from being damaged by the rains. Our next photo shows the impact of erosion in an area in Ikosan Kebre in Calabar, Cross River State. Eyewitness reporter calls on state authorities to intervene and end its spread. We can see the aftermath of a road accident along Ring Road 3 in Abuja, the federal capital territory. Our eyewitness reporter advises motorists to adhere to traffic regulations and perhaps slow down their speed. Finally, is this photo sent in from Alausa area in Lagos State. It shows people waiting for what our eyewitness reporter uh, describes as uh, a long wait for the collection of their national identity cards. Thank you for sending in those pictures and know that you too can become an eyewitness reporter for Channels Television. The House of Representatives has started implementing its resolution to suspend Abdul Mamin Jabrin for 180 sitting days. Jabrin's office within the legislative chambers was today sealed off and locks changed by officials of the House. Other officials took inventory of items found in the lawmaker's office. Jabrin was suspended on Wednesday, September 28th, for breaching the practices and precedents of the House. The House also called on Jabrin to tender a formal apology before his resumption of legislative duties. Jibrin has not got to, we have not received, nobody has served us with any court. You cannot, I cannot sit here and uh, think in advance what Jibrin will do. But there's a punishment on ground. Whatever comes, you approach it as it comes. I hope you get it. But please, this issue of court, court, court. I want you to clear that there is clear separation of powers in this country. We have the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. No arm of government is to gag another government. And I can assure you, if decisions are taken here, and somebody is aggrieved, he can run to where uh, actions can be taken. But for us, we have done what is within the rules. The Constitution empowers us to have our rules. It empowers us to implement it. That has been implemented. But uh, if he goes to court tomorrow, we wait. When he goes to court, we brief you accordingly. For now, nothing has happened. Let's hand you over now to my colleague in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, for more on the News at 10. Hi, Ibrahim. Hello, Amarachi. It's good to see you. While we're still staying with the National Assembly, where the House of Representatives 
is set to investigate an allegation that over 500 billion naira is been owed to the petroleum pipeline and marketing company by some major oil marketers and independent oil marketers. According to the motion sponsored by Agom Jaribe, some of the marketers are beneficiaries of intervention allocations from the PPMC. In addition, the motion called for attention for the need to government to ensure that these funds are recovered for the country. House is also aware that PPMC, a subsidiary of NMPC, is owed over 500 billion naira by major oil marketers and independent oil marketers. The House is further aware that there is a connivance and compromise by functionaries of PPMC to leave government funds in the hands of these marketers, thereby putting the country in dire financial straits. The House is further aware that PPMC went into throughput agreements with some of the marketers, which does not empower the marketers to sell out products stored in their respective tank farms. But the marketers surreptitiously and criminally sold out the products and have since not remitted the funds to PPMC. Meanwhile, a modified version of a bill which seeks to eliminate all forms of discrimination against women has passed through the crucial second reading on the floor of the Senate. The sponsor of the bill, Senator Biodu Lujimi, explains that the bill, when passed, will, among other things, eliminate all forms of violence against women. Our correspondent Linda Akibe reports. Abuse and exploitation. The gender equality bill is making a second journey through the National Assembly. Right to fair hearing and right to freedom from discrimination. The bill suffered a humiliating fate at its first introduction a few months ago as some male lawmakers were strongly opposed to it, maintaining that enacting a law to accord women equal rights with men is in conflict with the country's religious and cultural beliefs. The sponsor of the bill, Senator Biodun Ulujimi, leads the debate. She says Section 4 of the bill prohibits all forms of discrimination against any person on account of gender, age and disability through spoken words, acts, rules, customs and practices by any person or institution. She hopes the bill would receive favorable responses from lawmakers this time. The bill further provides that all appropriate measures be taken to eliminate discrimination against women in political and public life, eliminate discrimination against women in, ed in education, eliminate discrimination against women in employment, eliminate in occupation or any profession, prevent discrimination against women on the grounds of marriage, marital status, or maternity. Contributing to the debate, the Deputy Senate President advised the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to examine the bill closely to make sure that its provisions do not conflict with existing laws. But the Chief Whip disagrees with the Deputy Senate President. So I think that what we need to do is to look at the, the, the law, the bill itself, and make sure that there are such conflicts are eliminated at the time it's being processed by the committee, so that we're able to leave the best of the bill that itself are consistent with our legislation. With all due respect to our esteemed Deputy Senate President, I totally disagree with his submission on the so-called conflict with the Constitution. The bill is referred to the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters for further legislative work and the committee is to present a report on the bill in four weeks. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Many thanks, Linda. Now, the increasing rate of violence against children in Plateau State is becoming worrisome to state officials as cases of molestation range from sexual to physical abuse. Emotional and child labor issues are also being reported frequently across the state. UNICEF Child Protection Specialist Ladia Labi says the high prevalence rate of violence against children has negative effect and there is a need to continually raise awareness against it. Reports from the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, says six out of every ten children in Nigeria suffer from one form of abuse or another. 
These worrisome statistics is why UNICEF is collaborating with the Plateau state government to launch a campaign to stop the assaults on minors across the state. If we put our children on the priority list in terms of the attention they ought to be getting from us, in terms of the welfare they ought to have, in terms of their safety, in terms of how we ought to be impacting on them, then irrespective of the situation, irrespective of how bad the economy is or how things are, they will still remain on a priority list and will still give them priority attention. The culture of keeping silent in cases involving violence against children has been a challenge for security agencies, but it's a trend they believe must stop. We are begging members of the public, give us information, and we are not taking anything lightly. Gone are the days when policemen, when you take a case of rape or a case of defilement to them, policemen will say, eh, where did you go that you have raped you? Why did you even go to that place? We have trained them in such a way that they have started taking these issues very seriously. So we are assuring members of the public, if such matters occur, report the, those issues to us, and you will see that justice will take its course. With the high rate of violence against children, the Plateau state government says it's time for everyone to be involved at the home front, in schools or in the communities, to end a menace that can negatively affect the future generation. Unidentified youths have invaded the Imo State Specialist Hospital in Oweri, damaging property worth millions of naira. An eyewitness account says the youth in their numbers carried out the invasion, claiming that the corpse of one of their kinsmen, who was allegedly murdered by a local vigilante, was deposited in the hospital. Shattered doors and windows, burnt and damaged vehicles scattered round the premises of the Imo State Specialist Hospital. Victims of the destruction already counting their losses. The unidentified youth in their numbers stormed the hospital premises around 2 p.m. shortly after a corpse was deposited at the hospital mortuary. At a point we closed the gate and they were outside. Before you knew it they regrouped. A lot of them. There were so many that I can't judge because everybody was afraid. And so when they were away there, we closed the gate. They summoned themselves and then they went ahead gathering fuel and a lot of things from the field station. Suddenly they climbed over the fence, broke the gate and they came into the hospital. Damaging all sorts of things and they started burning vehicles. While corroborating the story, the chief medical director of the hospital said the invasion was a surprise but would have been a lot worse if the police didn't intervene early enough. I reached my life to address it. Um, what I heard them say was that the most security network killed an innocent person and brought it to your hospital. You can see the police are here. They've done their job. Uh, of course, at this moment, we can say that uh, the only thing we have heard is uh, a revisit. On his part, the Imo State Commissioner of Police, who visited the scene for an on-the-spot assessment, described the incident as unfortunate and however promised that all perpetrators will be brought to book. We have succeeded in quelling the situation, but our uh, investigation is on. I will ensure that the perpetrators are arrested, investigated and prosecuted. Those seeming calmness may have returned to the hospital. Questions bordering on the invaders' identity and real reasons behind the attack hopefully will be answered when the police conclude on their investigation. From Imo now to Abia, where three people have recovered after an incident which occurred at a hotel in the state, while one person remains at the intensive care unit at the Federal Medical Center in Umwahia, the state capital. Confirming this report, the Commissioner of Police in Abia State, Mr. Adele Oyebade, said some of those involved in the incident are presently recuperating at the accident and emergency unit of the hospital. The CP advised residents to go about their lawful duties as police has commenced investigations to ascertain the cause of two deaths recorded yesterday. The investigation is ongoing. We are monitoring their state of health. There was one particular person there that was almost stable. He will be in a better position to talk to us and from there we can have a true picture of what really happened. So for now, we'll still say that the investigation is ongoing. The owner of the hotel have 
made useful statement and want to ask the members of the public should still keep their peace because there was a lot of crowd there trying to put uh, the, the place on fire and we have to proactively prevent that. And that's it from Abuja, but still ahead on the news at 10, President of the African Development Bank condemns Nigeria's high monetary policy rate. That's on business news. Do join us again.